and passionate on technology-driven uh, business models and stuff, and created a, a thing called New Mobility Consulting, along with his brother, <coughs> who helped startups and investors. And as a result, he's been doing some very interesting work in IOTA, which we'll be hearing about, uh, which uh, is, is focusing on uh, uh, the adoption of that uh, the IOTA tangle in mobility and transportation. And meanwhile, Paul Handy, one of the key developers of this, uh, electrical engineering background and has been following this whole uh, um, uh, blockchain thing since way before anybody had heard of it and been following IOTA since 2015. So, um, you guys will set up with your slides. Uh, yeah. Welcome and uh, thanks very much. much, Mike. So, um, <laughs> so, you heard about blockchains and now we are talking about something that goes beyond blockchain technologies. Um, so, um, is this better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you think about Bitcoin, it, we can call it like a first general, well, actually one thing that helps a great deal is when you actually switch on the microphone. That's a, uh, <laughs> so, that's much better. Yeah, you can hear you. Yeah. So when you think about blockchain technologies, you know, obviously Bitcoin is, uh, the cryptocurrency that first actually leveraged blockchain technologies to address this double spend problem, right? But it was not really a great platform. So that's when Ethereum came along and innovated in areas like smart contracts. So we think about these as second generation distributed ledger technologies or blockchain technologies. And um, as you um, may know, there are some limitations that are inherent to a, a blockchain architecture, right? There are scalability issues because you have a finite size of a block, you basically compute a new block uh, every couple of minutes, so there is inherent latency. And there are transaction fees, and also because of the mining uh, farms that we see today, there is a tendency for centralization of mining power, right? So there's certain, in certain ways, you can argue there is, um, uh, you know, the blockchain and the, the miner farms, in some ways, lead to centralizations and basically challenge the entire concept of decentralization. So what we are here to talk about is IOTA is a different kind of a technology to enable a distributed ledger, right, as a more generic term. Um, uh, and it's based on a direct and acyclic graph. And you will hear from Paul what that is and how it works. Um, but essentially IOTA is the first distributed ledger technology that's based on a direct and acyclic graph. It is managed by a foundation, so there were like four guys that came up with um, the idea, Dominic Schiener, David Sönstebo, um, Come From Beyond, and um, Sergey Popov. And they figured, hey, we can actually use this directed acyclic graph to achieve a distributed network and achieve consensus in a permissionless system. And today, the IOTA Foundation is a not-for-profit in Germany that governs the development of uh, the IOTA protocol and is working on standardizing the protocol um, together with ONG and other standardization bodies. We heard earlier that there's going to be different kinds of uh, technologies to address specific use cases. And uh, the idea behind IOTA has been from the beginning that we need basically a uh, system built specifically for the Internet of Things and for the machine to machine economy. That doesn't mean that. IOTA cannot be used for other purposes, but it's really a purpose-built distributed ledger technology to address the unique challenges of IoT and the machine-to-machine -machine economy. And when you think about it, you know, we have been talking about Internet of Things for many years now. Um, I myself actually started the activities of SAP with the MIT Udo ID Center many years ago, like 2001, right, when the MIT Udo ID Center standardized EPC, RFID technologies, right? And if you look at today, we still actually have an island of things rather than an internet of things, right? We still lack fundamental issues of how do we create identities for things, how do we establish trust in the data, and so forth, yeah? Let alone how do we actually make these machines autonomous agents that can actually do transactions amongst each others to, on behalf of their human masters. Yeah? So, obviously, there's a lot of... Um, stuff happening here in mobility, energy, health, um, industry 4.0, trade and logistics, where such technology has, has significant applications. But very important is that we really create an open permissionless system where we can really 
enable all these different systems to interact with each other and establish trust without any central intermediaries. So we really deliver on the promise of this internet of things, right? And this is really what IOTA is built to create. When you think about the unique requirements in IoT and the machine-to-machine -machine economy, uh, one aspect is, of course, trust in data. Um, when you think about sensor data that you collect through an air quality sensor or temperature sensor, how do you actually establish the trust that the sensor exists? Yeah? How can you make the data immutable when you think about, for example, you want to up update the um, autonomous driving machine learning model of an autonomous vehicle? You would typically compute that machine learning model in the cloud and then you want to do an over-the-air update to uh, the fleet of vehicles. As an OEM, you would be, want to be very certain that nobody is attacking uh, you and that's an angle middle attack to manipulate that AI model, right? Because you would have liability for the functioning of that vehicle. So trust, as we think about data as the new oil, it's very important that we can establish trust in data and make it immutable. So that's a huge part, and also, of course, the privacy aspects, right? We as humans, I think, should own and control our data. Uh, and today, of course, we have a centralization of the data where a few players around the world really have all the data, which is the foundation of for machine learning and AI. And we don't know really what happens to our data. If you just do a transaction on an online payment system, you don't know where all the data uh, that you just generated ends up. The other aspect is in this machine-to-machine -machine world, you know, we have very low resource uh, components, we have sensors, we need to deal with real-time transactions, we can't afford to wait for a new block to be calculated, but want a much more real-time model. <laughs> and it has to be very lightweight and ener energy efficient to be functioning in this world of IoT. And then, of course, you also have the online-offline problem, right? You can't you, you, you can rely on always on connectivity because connectivity is expensive and not ubiquitously available. So one cool thing about the Oda Tangle that you'll hear about is that it's partition tolerant and you can operate in offline, online mode. Yeah. And then of course there's a whole notion of new business models, right? Um, when you think about the future of a machine-to-machine -machine economy, when you want to sell data, some of these transactions will be very small. So the question is how can we make that economically feasible to trade this data? And therefore, IOTA has been built to not have any transaction fees, so you can even do very small transactions uh, in an efficient way. And ultimately, IOTA envisions that machines become their own economic agents, right? When you think about a robotic taxi, for example, in the future, it will basically do transactions <coughs> on its own behalf. It will pay for road usage charges. It will do, it will charge itself, right? It will pay for parking and so on without any human intervention. So how can these machines establish trust, transfer assets, and make payments amongst each other in an open permissionless system that nobody owns and controls? So the IOTA Tango is um, this open source permissionless DLT for the Internet of Things, and it uh, delivers on a lot of these uh, requirements that I've just described. Right? It's, it promises to be highly scalable. Um, it has no transaction fees. Um, it has low energy requirements, you can secure data transfers, you can establish identities for things, you can do offline transactions, and also it is quantum resistant. And um, in order to learn more about how this thing works, um, you know, uh, I have brought along with me Paul, who is one of the co-developers of the IOTA Foundation. He has built a lot of this technology and he's working on some really cool stuff. So Paul, please um, tell us a bit more about the Tangle. Hi. Um, or do, I, do I press enter to go next, or the arrows? Or? Well, all the clicker things. All right. Well. Oh, there's a clicker. <coughs> I think it doesn't work. It wasn't the ball. Yeah, it's not working. Um, oh, it does work. Yeah. Look at that. It's I'm just going to presume it's that top button. Oh, maybe the, the arrows. Sideways, left and right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose you could read this. I can't see it. Uh, the, uh, so the, the IOTA Tangle is a directed acyclic graph. Um, the, the, a lot, the, <laughs> there's a bunch of different things I could talk about, and there's a bunch of different contexts of this. Um, we specifically set this out to be a bivariate directed acyclic graph. This separates it from blockchain, which is the longest chain wins rule, to a, a tangle, 
which is a, in the generic sense, a largest weight wins, largest weight rules, or yeah, largest weight rules. So that means that uh, you know, for a given, um, what is a directed asymptotic graph? I think we, I think we're in a pretty smart room. We know what that is. It only points in one direction. <clears throat> so um, each vertex in uh, which is uh, you know one of these blocks in here is. Uh, uh, represents a transaction. Each edge represents a, an approval or a referral um, for, a, for a given transaction. In this case, off to the uh, left in the green section, um, we would consider this transaction to be uh, approved by the network and be in consensus when we see that the new incoming transactions indirectly reference it. Um, so we have a high confidence that essentially I'm going to stay in the network's history in the future. Uh, low confidence in the middle that I'm going to stay in the network's future because we have this adaptation period between the time that we post on the right a tip, which is not referenced, and the time that uh, we discover what the network has chosen. Uh, so when you add a transaction to the tangle, you start somewhere deep in the tangle. You pick a site and you look upward to, to recent transactions, these tips. And you uh, count the number of sites between each of the transactions that are referring you. Uh, look at the dis difference between the, uh, your transaction's weight and that transaction's weight. And you move, you, you, you do a random a weighted random walk to one of those sites. And you do this over and over and over until you get to a tip. And uh, you choose that tip as uh, one that you're going to select. Because the goal is, as a transaction issuer, we've, we've merged user and miner. I want to maximize the probability that my transaction is going to be selected in the same manner that I just selected one. <coughs> so I try to pick one with the best weight. Um, yeah, I should have brought my glasses in for my car. Apologies. <laughs> so um, this, this weighted random walk is biased towards transactions with high weight. Now, we, we have this naive sense of uh, tra transaction weight by uh, site count. Uh, in, in the IOTA tangle, we count each site's weight as, as one. And uh, on the internet, we do a proof of work so that uh, it's actually more of a civil resistance rather than uh, you know, a well, leader selection in the, in the blockchain sense. Um, so yeah, depending on the, that, the weight of each of those, I'm going to transition more prob probably to one of these. And if I were to compute all of it, I could see you know, an uh, exit distribution for every tip. But that's computationally intensive, so we just do it uh, one transaction at a time. Excuse me? Question, please. You, know, you could stand closer to the screen. That's a good idea. <laughs> Blind is a bad idea coming, depending on the day. Um, so the consensus is based on confirmation confidence. Right now, we, we look at uh, the, the tips and the counts of the tips, but there are certain things that we can do to increase the uh, resistance to bad actors in the network, local modifiers. So the IOTA, IOTA network, um, oh, I, I suppose I'll follow this. I, I always never follow the slides. So I'm going to just ignore the slides for a moment. In the IOTA network, it's, it's, a, it's a gossip based network, um, which, I mean, we're, we're all familiar with that in peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks, but uh, as opposed to something like uh, the longest chain wins uh, rule, where you actually you have to be as close as possible to all the other nodes. In the iota tank, in the tangle sense, in the iota sense, uh, it's very tolerable to these to uh, network distance between other nodes, and we can actually use that as a strength against attackers. It's it's more difficult if you're more sparse to, for example, do. Um, uh, Eclipse attacks and things like that. Uh, if if we were to uh, change our our uh, local or do local modifiers on our weighted random walks, 
<coughs> we can um, <laughs> look at me not even following the thing. We can we can make it so that, for example, I can look at when transactions arrived, and I can modify my weights to uh, to when they arrived in the network, prioritize those that arrived first. I can uh, look up in the graph, and I can look towards sites that are uh, of subjective importance to me as an operator, like. Uh, you know, if I was in my mother's basement, uh, my mother, her, her grocery things, or uh, if I'm going out to eat Domino's or something like that, I want to follow these things because the, for, from my perspective, the consensus and this different ontology matters of the people who I interact with. So we have uh, a single participation class, of course. There's a, the transition transaction issuance is the attachment to the ledger. There's no memory pool to speak of. So users pick a site, they attach their new data to that site, and we kind of get this uh, swarm consensus that comes out of it. And the, our, you know, how much data we can handle locally and as, how, as that emerges into a, in, into a network, we find our local limit of how fast we can go. It's really just, you know, generally, you know, networking doesn't grow as fast as um, computation. Um, so we can do microtransaction economics. One of these things that I'm really interested in the, in the IOTA space is that I can spend a very small amount of money. I can spend one IOTA, which, you know, who cares how, how much that is. We're, we're going to be um, increasing the uh, precision of that from 33 to 81 trits in the future. Um, but I could do dust amounts at once and then immediately follow up and use that again and again and again and again. And we have this decoupling in this gray area of our tips and this purple area of our low confidence areas and our green area of high confidence areas so we can, we can decouple use from settlement. And in the IOTA case, when we do that, and we do these micropayment streams, thank you, uh, we discover that we actually decrease the, the adaptation period and find that that, that uh, purple area gets shorter. You use a term called TRITS. What are those? TRITS? Yeah. TRITS. IOTA. IOTA, IOTA was uh, actually born out of a uh, hardware startup to do uh, multi-valued logic, general purpose, IoT microprocessors. Okay. Um, trinary is the uh, most efficient radix. It's, uh, you know, the, the most efficient radix or the lowest radix economy is, is the natural number, E, but uh, it's really hard to deal in natural numbers on wires. So, uh, so the closest one to that is three. I already uses a balanced ternary in that because uh, it's supposed to go on IoT, and we already have telecommunications that uses multi-value logic. We are we uh, recently I, I can't remember which company announced that they're moving toward uh, in-place um, multi-value com memory computation. So. Uh, this group is trying to get ahead of that. They have some proprietary technology that I'm not personally privy to. I only know that it's uh, well, trying I'm a little confused. What's, I think you said 27 and 81. I don't remember the exact number. Uh, 33 and 81. 33 and 81. 33 and 81. Yeah. What's the difference between the two of them? That's what I'm trying to understand. Oh, uh, well, it's, you know, it's the, the size of a number. Uh, you have uh, an int. In, uh, in normal programming is 32 bits, so long is 64. Uh -huh. uh, if we have 33 trits versus 81 trits, and 81 trits we get to represent smaller and smaller uh, numbers. Uh, I see. I see. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> we get more granularity. Um, so some unique uh, challenges to this is uh, the fact that it's probably, prob sorry, did I answer your question? No, that's fine, that's okay. fine. We have probabil probabilistic confirmation, so when you attach, there's not a fee that you can pay someone to make it uh, more likely for them to uh, accept it as a miner. So you have to do your own work to select these transactions, which has a, a minimal cost, but a you know uh, some nanocent cost. 
And uh, the, the tangle is a new concept. We have some open research questions. What can happen if we have some fancy undiscovered attack on the network? <laughs> I'll give it back to you, Alex. Oh, two minutes. Um, okay, so the auto network is composed of a bunch of nodes. There's uh, right now in on the IOTA on the cloud, IOTA on the internet, we have a coordinator which periodically uh, adds milestones. This is like, uh, you know, if you look into the Bitcoin source code, they have a checkpoint that they put in there. This just is a live checkpoint. Uh, in the future, you can imagine if there's uh, many coordinators and coordinators for every economic agent, then you can use these local modifiers and get an easy swarm consensus based upon uh, economic clustering. A transaction has, uh, uh, well, it has this life cycle of I decide where I want my money to go, where my data to go, I attach it, and I do proof of work on the internet. <laughs> okay, there you go. They always have to flip me behind the ear to, to make me stop talking. <laughs> so, you know, if I told you that Paul only talks about, let's say, the old stuff now and not what he's currently working on, then uh, you could imagine what he would be, uh, how your mind could spin if, he, if I would really unleash him onto you. Yeah? So, um, what you want to take away is, you know, this IOTA is a, is a different kind of a directed acyclic graph based uh, blockchain, yeah? where you don't have miners, but every participant in the network is also basically a doing proof of work, uh, is approving other people's transactions. Yeah? So you have no transaction fees, and very cool also about the fact that you have no transaction fees, and the nature of this, of this network is that you can actually think about it as a data transfer protocol, right? So you can, you can send data because there's no transaction fees and you can secure this data um, on the network. Quick, quick question. Yeah. How are the people performing the uh, proof of work um, being compensated for the, using their resources to, to do that? What's the profit model? So the notion is that um, you basically have, take, take you have like a Raspberry Pi or whatever, it could be a, an IOTA node. Um, you know, basically this is existing hardware, you need minimal energy to wake up that chip and you expend a minimal amount of energy and that's your cost of participating in the network. There will be other kind of uh, monetization models, um, for example, when you permanently store the, the, the history of the ledger, yeah, to then get compensated for doing those kind of services in the network, yeah. And he's also working on this, um, you know, cubic, project which basically introduces Oracle smart contracts and quorum based outsourced computations to on top of the IOTA tangle where the notion is not that machines can pay each other and you can do outsourced computations. So when you think about like there's a lot of stuff going on with IOTA where different corporations are, are developing solutions on top of the IOTA tangle like Volkswagen for example did this project on over the air updates yeah? as I mentioned earlier the University of Aachen is creating secure audit trails uh, of production cycles, yeah? Uh, there's smart charging applications, obviously, right, where you could have this um, charging station as its own economic agent as a wallet and the car uh, doing transactions peer-to-peer. -peer. There's work going on around energy, you know, energy-positive 